Before I go any further with configuring this Windows machine, I'm going to go into my virtual machines and I'm going to take a snapshot of this machine. So we'll do actions and then we'll go to snapshots, take snapshot. And I'll do initial configs part one or something like that. Let's see, snapshot virtual machines memory. I'm not going to do that because I don't need to. And we'll take the snapshot. Now I've got a, a, a little bit of a uh, turnaround point, something that I can, can fall back to if things go wrong. Or if I do a configuration that I'd really like to undo, then I can revert back to that snapshot and move forward from there. Now with the snapshot complete, I'll minimize this and go into administrative tools. Then I wanna to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. I'll expand my domain and then down here in users, we're going to add a new user. So we'll do new user. This user that I'm going to make will actually be the user that allows Cisco Unified Communications Manager and Cisco Unity Connection and everything else to sync with LDAP to pull users into their database, but also to authenticate those users. For the first name, I'll make it UC. Let me click back in there. UC. Last name, I'll make it Sync LDAP. And then the user logon ID will be UC Sync LDAP at pcanane.com. So we'll hit next. Caps is on. That's fine. I'm just going to make this an easy password. I'm going to disable that the user must change the password at next login. I'm also going to say that the password never expires. And now this user is done and created. Let's see. Uh, okay, it doesn't meet the password complexity. So here's the thing. Earlier on, I had changed the password complexity. But then when I added a domain to the system and, uh, you know, um, create turned it into a domain controller, all these different things, it reverts back the... Um, password complexity. So if you want to go back to the easier password complexity, you'll have to go back through those steps from the previous video. So now I've changed the password and it should meet the complexity requirements. It does. So we're good. Moving forward, uh, when I go to the CUCM side, I'll have to put in that same information in order to sync with LDAP and authenticate my users against LDAP as well. I'm actually going to go ahead and change the password complexity again. So we'll go into local security policy and then we'll do account policy, password policy. And if you want to change any of these, you'll notice that they're grayed out as compared to before where they weren't grayed out and we were able to change them. So we'll need to go and take a different route first before we can change these local security policies. What we need to do is click start and then type in run hit enter and type in gpmc.msc. Now we want to expand this, then expand domains, expand our domain. Let me make this bigger. Now what we need to do is on do, uh, default domain policy, we have to right click on that, say edit. Let's expand this here. So we'll say policies, we're going to go under computer configuration, policies, windows settings, then under here, we'll do security settings and account policies, and we'll do password policy. Now in here is where we can change things. So I'll set everything to what I want it to be, and then I'll resume the recording again. Here you can see that for my Password complexity, I, I set it to zero passwords remembered, zero for the maximum age, zero for the minimum age, and then for the minimum password length, I set that to zero as well. Then I disabled the requirement to meet the complexity requirements, and I left this as the default value here. Let's, call, let's close all of this out now. We don't need that open. We don't need this open. I do want to check the local security policy to see if it changed underneath here. It didn't. So what I'm going to do is reboot this and see if that actually changes under there. And then if it doesn't change under there, I'll add a user to see if it actually took took hold to the level where users can be added with simple passwords. 
My server is back online now, so we'll go back into the start menu, Windows Administrative Tools. Then we were going into Local Security Policy. Account Policies, Password Policy. And now you can see the changes after restarting the machine. I'll close all of this out now. And we'll go back to the Active Directory Users and Computers. Then we'll continue setting up this user that we just created recently. I'll double click on it. Then we'll go into member of, and we'll click add because this user, this particular user is going to need to have certain um, privileges in order to be able to, to do our LDAP syncing and authentication. Now here in this box, we'll type in domain admin. And then if I hit enter, it should add domain admins. So it did. Okay. And then I'll hit apply. I'll hit okay. Now that one has the right privileges to be able to be our user who does the bind with LDAP. Because when, when call manager tries to authenticate or tries to do a dir sync, it's going to create a bind with the LDAP. This user needs to be the one who authenticates against LDAP. And then whatever happens after the fact for the user to authenticate, can take place, but but the primary authentication needs to happen between CUCM and the LDAP server itself using this particular uh, UC sync LDAP. Now you can put whatever username or password or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be UC, UC sync LDAP. Just for me, it's easier to look at that and realize, okay, this is for my unified communications and it's specifically for syncing LDAP or even doing LDAP authentication. Next, I'm going to create the organizational unit where my my users will be that will be synced over to my unified communication system. So we'll, I, I kind of flew through that. Let me go back. We'll go up here to our domain and we right click on that. Then we do new and we do organizational unit. I'm going to name this OUCCM users. We'll click OK on that. And then here within this OU, we can actually start adding new users that we want to have synced over to the CUCM, the to the Unity connection, or wherever it might be. For this, I'll make only a couple users. So we'll have user and the uh, last name will be one. Or let me think about this. User one, do I want to have it that way? Yeah, I'll just do it that way. And then I'll have the user, the logon ID uh, user, and then the number one at pkname.com for the password. I'm just going to make it the simple password again. I don't want them to have to change it at next login and I'll have it as password never expires because it's just something I don't want to deal with later on down the road. We'll say finish. Let's see. I think I can copy this. No, it didn't work. Whatever. So we'll do user two, user two. Okay. Well, at least I don't have to change this part. And then I'll, I'll even add some, some agents here as well, because I'm going to add in a contact center at some point. We'll have two agents, just like we have two users. Let's see. Do, 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 already exists. Oh, I messed that up here. Agent two, agent two, agent two. Now we have our users added. We have our domain. Um, now we have our users added. We also have our user that's able to bind to the LDAP server so that we can sync and we can authenticate against LDAP. We have our agents created. So far, this thing's coming along. We have our snapshot done as well, which is, is going to be very helpful down the road if anything goes wrong. But in the spirit of doing these small videos, these uh, bite-sized videos, I'm going to end this one here and we'll pick up with configuring the Windows Server 2019 Part 3 in our next video.